Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be working out the area of this very nice heart shape here, which has this interesting equation here, x squared plus y minus root absolute value of x minus 1 all squared equals 1. If you want to have a go at trying to work out the area of this heart, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to dive straight into a solution. Okay, so the way that we're going to work out this area is by using the sum calculus. The first thing we're going to do is make y the subject of the formula here. So taking the x squared onto that side and then square rooting, we get y minus the square root of the absolute value of x minus 1 is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then just bringing this guy onto the right side, we get y is the square root of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And now you might be a bit concerned because we've got a plus or minus here, but that isn't actually too surprising because you can see for almost any x value you plug in, you've got two different y values on the graph. And this is actually the motivation that we're going to have to try and integrate or work out the area here, is we're going to look at kind of vertical strips like this. So all the way across. And so this area, which I'll call A for now, we're going to express as a double integral, which you may argue is a bit overkill, and there's probably a valid point for that, but this is just to motivate um, the idea of using double integrals to help work out areas. And so I'm going to put dy uh, dx here. And so where is x going from? Well, it's going from over here to over here. And now what are those limits? Well, it's not too difficult to convince yourself that those are going to be minus 1 and 1. Uh, I mean, the, the end points here are going to be when this square root here uh, jumps from being an imaginary number to a real number. So that's going to be when x squared is 1, and so that's when x is minus 1 and 1, which is why those limits are there. How about our limits for the inner integral? Well, it's going to be the two values of y, so we're going to take the minus on the bottom and the plus on the top. So this limit here is going to be the square root of the absolute value of x plus 1 minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And our top limit here is going to be the square root of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And you may go, well, this is horrible. How on earth are we going to evaluate this? Well, thankfully, the thing we're integrating is just 1. It's just 1 dy dx. OK, cool. Well, this is nice. How do I integrate 1? Well, the integral of 1 is just y. Or if I'm integrating 1 with respect to y, it's just y. And then if I plug in my upper limit and plug in my lower limit, well, there's going to be some nice cancellations there. Those will cancel. Those will cancel. And I'm just left with the integral for minus 1 to 1 of this minus minus this. And so that's just going to be 2 root 1 minus x squared dx. Very nice. So we get that this area, the area of this heart, is just equal to this integral here. And we've got the square root of 1 minus x squared here. So this motivates a little trig substitution. So we're just going to say x equals sine of theta. And in doing so, we get dx equals cos theta, d theta. And so this integral here just becomes the integral from, well, when x is minus 1, sine of theta, theta would have to be minus pi over 2, and the upper limit would be pi over 2. And we've got two lots of the square root of 1 minus x squared, so that's 1 minus sine squared theta, which is square root of cos squared theta, which is cos theta. And we don't have to worry about pluses or minuses here, because cos theta is positive in in this interval here. And then dx is just cos theta again, so we get 2 cos squared theta d theta. And now to evaluate this, this is a pretty standard integral. We're going to use our double angle formally. So we're going to recall that cos of 2x is the same as 2 cos squared x minus 1. So adding 1 on both sides gives me that this is the integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of uh, cos 2x plus 1, or cos 2 theta, sorry, plus 1 d theta. And now we can just evaluate this. This is going to be a half sine 2 theta plus theta between pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. But sine of 2 times pi over 2, that's sine of pi, which is 0. And similarly, sine of minus pi is also 0. So this is just going to be pi over 2 minus minus pi over 2. And beautifully, this equals pi, which is pretty nice. The area of this heart here actually equals pi. But that's actually not all that's interesting here. We've worked out that this area here is pi, but we can actually notice something here. 
going back to this cancellation that we had here and here, this root x plus 1, uh, so the root absolute value of x plus 1 and the root absolute, uh, root absolute value of x plus 1, they came from um, up here. Uh, sorry, they came from the thing inside the bracket with y. And they didn't really matter at all because they ended up cancelling out. And this begs the question, well, what other shapes do we get when we change this thing to something else? Because using the exact same argument, the area of those shapes would be pi. And so just plotting a few of these on Desmos, we get some really interesting graphs, which also have area pi. OK, so here's just a few examples of some of the graphs you get just by perturbing the function next to y. So if I make it tan of the absolute a square root of the absolute value of x in there, you get this half pretty similar. If you change the tan for e to the absolute value of x, you still kind of get this heart-ish shape. And if I change it to x to the power of 10, you get this shape here, which looks a little bit like um, a Batman mask, I think. Um, but what's really interesting is using the exact same technique, you can show that the areas of all of these are pi. So I encourage you to have a play with maybe a graphing calculator and change this function to other functions and see what other weird shapes you can create, all of which have area pi. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.